Hi, I'm Dr. Hope Brugo, a breast medical oncologist and director of breast oncology and clinical trials education at the University of California, San Francisco. I'm here with uh, Oncology Brazil to talk a little bit about the most exciting areas at ESMO 2018. This is a herald ESMO. We have more, I think, first uh, breast cancer presentations at this meeting than I can certainly ever remember in my career and practice changing presentations, uh, registrational studies that I think have a big impact on the way we think about and will treat breast cancer moving forward. I think the uh, two most exciting presentations are in Passion 130, which looked at the checkpoint inhibitor atezolizumab in combination with nabpaclitaxel versus a placebo with nabpaclitaxel in patients uh, with metastatic triple negative breast cancer in the first line setting. What this trial showed, which was quite intriguing, was a modest improvement in progression-free survival. Significant, but small difference in terms of months, but a marked difference in overall survival, particularly in the pdl one positive population. So patients' tumors that tested positive for pdl one enjoyed a marked difference in overall survival when they received atezolizumab versus placebo. And this trial remained blinded, actually. So although a tiny percentage of patients received checkpoint inhibitors off study after their cancer progressed, very few were exposed to immunotherapy because of the lack of unblinding, so they couldn't cross over to another therapy. The treatment was actually very well tolerated. There were some immune toxicities, as we've now become accustomed to seeing with checkpoint inhibitors, but not many, and they were generally treated easily and recognized easily, which is encouraging as well. So I think that this represents a new paradigm for the treatment of triple negative breast cancer. One, that we're going to be testing for PDL1, and two, that immune checkpoint inhibitors are the first therapy we've ever seen that prolongs survival in the non germ line triple negative breast cancer population. Very exciting data. The second trial that I think really affects clinical practice is Solar One. This also was a registrational phase three trial looking at the alpha specific PI3 kinase inhibitor alpelisib. And this is unique because the prior registrational phase three trials have looked at either pan PI3 kinase inhibitors, which failed due to toxicity, and in the overall population, not a very significant uh, differences in progression-free survival. Uh, and then there was a uh, beta-sparing a PI3 kinase inhibitor called Tocilizumab that was tested in the Sandpiper trial. Uh, and that also showed a small difference in progression-free survival, but a big toxicity and a lot of patients who dropped out due to toxicity. So that was quite disappointing. And they did look at specifically the PI3 kinase mutant population. It, with the SOLAR-1 trial, the primary endpoint was progression-free survival in the PI3 kinase mutant population. Uh, indeed, we, uh, as I'm an investigator in that trial, were able to show a marked difference in progression-free survival, which was even greater on blinded central review, quite clinically significant. Obviously, we don't have survival data yet, uh, and in the non-PI3 kinase mutant population, the difference was quite modest. So this actually brings us to a point where we actually have another marker, uh, a biologic marker that can drive a treatment choice for breast cancer, and that's really a big difference as well. Now we have PDL1 and PI3 kinase mutations to drive treatment choice for effective therapies in combination with endocrine therapy. Alpelisib was given in combination with fulvestrant, which is well taught tolerated. Alpelisib itself, like other drugs in its class, causes hyperglycemia, a rash, and some other toxicities. But overall, patients were able to stay on alpelisib and the toxicity could generally be well managed. This is certainly something we're going to have to focus on moving forward so that clinicians, as the drug enters the market, are familiar with how to manage the toxicities up front, as this is critical to patient care and quality of life. And then there are some other presentations which I think are quite interesting, a uh, number of quality of life presentations that are really important. There's a fascinating histone deacetylase inhibitor called chitamide, HDAC inhibitor they're called, given in combination with exemestane versus exemestane and placebo. And this, was a, this is a Chinese produced agent and a trial done in China showed an improvement in progression-free survival, which is exciting because it's yet another agent uh, that may alter the course of uh, ER-positive, hormone receptor-positive disease. Uh, the, there is a HDAC inhibitor being studied in the U.S. cooperative groups, Antinostat, which has uh, completed accrual, and we're looking for results from that trial, hopefully in 2019. So we have a lot of hope now, given that there's already a positive trial with an HDAC inhibitor. 
There's also a suggestion in Paloma 3 with the uh, CDK4-6 inhibitor of palbociclib combined with fulvestrant as second or greater line therapy for hormone receptor positive metastatic breast cancer that survival, uh, although it wasn't improved in the overall population in a statistically significant way, that in the hormone sensitive population, survival is impacted. And that's very encouraging for us because seeing survival differences in the hormone receptor positive population has proved an enormous challenge. So all in all, it's been an incredibly exciting meeting. I'm happy to be able to tell you about it today. Thank you.